Hi. In this video, we are going to talk about model monitoring. Basically, we are going to specifically look at techniques that can be used to monitor your models in live production. In my previous video, I gave an overview of model monitoring and I also talked about concepts like data drift and model drift. There is a continuation of that video. Uh, if you just want to know uh, what is data drift and what is model drift, you can click the link on the top and watch my previous video. Uh, I'm going to cover part of it, but I'm going to mostly focus on techniques and uh, give an idea of what we are going to model, what we are, what we are going to monitor in a production. Right. So let's get started. So first thing is be prepared all right your model can deteriorate any time yeah it can deteriorate as soon as you deploy your model you may get very good accuracy in your training set in your validation set or even in your out of time validation set but there are pretty uh, good chances that as soon as you put into production the model might not perform with the real serving data set or real incoming data set there is also a possibility that model may perform initially good for a few months or few years and over the time there can be some business scenario change or there can be some data quality issue or there can be some change in the way data is captured that your model might not perform over time. So there is very good possibility of anything to happen with model and be th these machine learning models being probabilistic in nature. You need to have additional uh, additional monitoring and additional controls in place so that you understand how your model is performing. And that's the key important aspect. And that's where you need to be prepared. Uh, the assumption is the model might not perform as soon as it, it being put into production. And so what we are going to do with it. Right. So what is model monitoring? Model monitoring is suppose you are you are checking the distribution of your incoming data set against your uh, benchmark data set. The benchmark data set can be your training data set or the validation data set. Right. You need to make sure your data inputs are very similar to what it was seen during the training. If you are getting some data set that is not seen during training, then automatically your model uh, prediction cannot be verified or the model prediction cannot be accurate. Right. So the main thing is you're checking the distribution between your validation phase or even the training data set phase. Right. If your validation and training accuracy are close to each other against your production serving data set. You are also making sure your models are performing as expected as per the defined SLS. So if you have an SLA to score each and every transaction within a uh, say like 20 millisecond over the time, what can happen is you are capturing too much of history. A model is not the ML model alone. It's the entire uh, pipeline. It can be your data engineering pipeline. It can be a feature engineering pipeline. Uh, it can be your entire uh, pipeline that you are trying to monitor. And uh, as and when you collect more data, uh, you may have more lookup values with the data set. And this day, this might take time by itself. So you're also monitoring the service level agreement is met over time. So today you might have a service level agreement of 30 milliseconds and your model might be performing within 10 milliseconds. But over the time as data volume grows, maybe you may encounter some issue. So that is the other thing you are monitoring. And as you're monitoring, you're also alerting if there is any issue. If there's a model day drift or it's a data drift, you have to alert the users because these models can be deployed in a critical business process and it can be decisioning your some of it can be making some of your key decisions for uh, you so you want to make sure yeah, as soon as you encounter a mo mo model drift or a data drift you are alerted and you are known of like the underlying assumption has changed and to cut off the model and maybe uh, bring a challenger rules platform into play so that, that's what you are going to do as part of model monitoring now you might have seen this particular uh, data life cycle end to end data life cycle where uh, I talk about starting from uh, problem identification till the model deployment and I have a separate video for this. You can click the link on the top and watch the entire life cycle of the video. But in this part, I'm going to more focus upon the last one, which is highlighted. You can see the data drift analysis and the model drift analysis. So basically what you do is you identify your problem, get your business data understanding, you collect your data, you do your feature engineering you do your data transformation build your model right and you evaluate to your model when you when your model is uh, model has pretty good accuracy validation accuracy or any metrics that you are uh, targeting you go and deploy the model now model is running in the production you are going to uh, model monitor the model for your model drift and data drift and that's what you are going to do i have a simplified version of this uh, that's what i'm going to more talk about 
so now this is this is more like how your uh, training cycle looks like you are done all your feature engineering and data engineering you have your futures you have your training data set you use the training data set to build models you may go across multiple algorithms multiple hyperparameters and finally you select a model that you are comfortable with and you want to deploy and before that what you check you also have a validation data set the validation data data set can be in time validation or out of time validation data set and you validate your model and you find the model to be pretty accurate now you want to uh, go and deploy this model now there are three things you need to do when you are deploying a model the very first thing is you are going to get the data distribution statistics of your validation data or the training data now if your training and validation accuracy is pretty close you can get from either data set because you would have already made sure that your uh, training and validation data has the same distribution but in case if you see like your training has uh, uh, better accuracy but validation is uh, not up to the training but you still want to deploy the model you get the data distribution statistics from your validation data set when i say data distribution statistics it's as simple as uh, minimum value maximum value mean value number of null counts number of zero counts so you are going to get those metrics out of your and the quantiles right you are going to get the uh, get those distribution statistics from the validation data set that is the first part the second part is once you have built the model you need to have your data and model score distribution now when i say data and model score distribution what you are doing is you are rank ordering your output of the model say if you have a classification model binary classification model you will have an output from 0 to 1 uh the, you apply sigmoid function and you will have an output from 0 to 1 you are basically bucketing those score into multiple deciles and then counting the number of instances within each bucket that's what you are doing like model and score distribution over here it is a simple thing there are multiple ways of doing it i will maybe keep you have a separate video on that but here i'm going to talk about the bare minimum uh, stuff you need to do to monitor your model and similarly what you are going to do is you are going to correlate your output score with the data as well and then put a distribution of it that's that's the second thing i'm going to show you an example i was say going to the next slide the third part is you have your final model that you want to deploy right these are the three outputs that you get Uh, so by default you get the save and deploy once you develop the model but you need to also make sure you need to add need to have the data and model score distribution as well as the data distribution uh, statistics now once you have it now the what i was talking about more is the uh, training part of it right now once you have it you are going to deploy the model the model is deployed now and when the model is deployed you have your benchmark distribution that is coming from the previous slide uh, so i am going to more focus on data and model score distribution so that is what i call as benchmark distribution so you have the benchmark distribution and then when as you are scoring new instances in your real world you basically have your real world distribution so now what you are doing is you are going to compare your benchmark distribution and the real world distribution and you are going to see how close your real world distribution is to your benchmark distribution and in case if it is not very close it is completely an uh, uh, it completely looks like an outlier to your benchmark distribution that means your model is having issues that you want to maybe retrain your model or you want to take it down and wait for new instances to be collected there are multiple options that are available so that's what we are going to do and what are the techniques to do it now you have two distribution over here what are different techniques to compare a model distribution as well as your data distribution so you have your population stability index which is a pretty st uh, strong and easy one that you can use that's what i'm going to show example as then you have your ks stats you have your histogram intersection you have sensitivity analysis which i have not mentioned here but sensitivity analysis is mostly mostly you are checking your sensitivity of the features to your model output score that's what you are trying to do over there and then you are z score and t score for mostly like uh, data drifts where you can take your data distribution and then compare with the uh, you are incoming distribution to you can just uh, run a z score or t score to uh, see whether what uh, whether whether it falls within two standard deviation or outside of it you have control charts where you can find out the upper control limit and the lower control limit it's so the multiple techniques available i'm going to more focus on uh, psi so over here that is the population stability index so how do we calculate population stability index so this is what we are going to do over here 
this is a PSI. On top, you have the PSI formula. I will come to that later. The very first thing is you need to have your output scores bucketed. So you have a score between 0 to 0 0.99 uh, when you have a typical binary classification problem. What I am doing is I am converting that score into buckets 0 0.99 to 0 0.9, 0 0.89 to 0 0.8. So I am converting that into multiple buckets and those are my deciles. So I have 10, uh, 10 buckets over here right then i am uh, basically benchmarking like in each score on the validation data set uh, preferably or out of time validation data set whatever you want to use i am basically telling okay where my between 0 0.9 to 0 0.99 i have five percentage of my uh, incoming records between this value i have six uh, percentage of my incoming records so i am kind of uh, creating a distribution of my incoming serving uh, data set so the serving distribution is what you are scoring in real time Right, that's what I'm doing. I'm telling how much instances fall into each of these uh, deciles that I have created. On the training distribution, which is my benchmark distribution that I have taken on my validation data set or out of time validation data set, I am again benchmarking it. Uh, how is the distribution of data? Now I have my serving distribution, I have my training distribution. I can use this to run across my PSI formula and get an output. So the PSI formula is basically, it's an, a sum of your actual, that is the serving distribution in our case, the actual percentage minus expected percentage, that is my serving percentage minus the training percentage into log normal of actual percentage by expected percentage and that's what the formula is and what we are going to do is we are going to go and calculate here so what i'm doing is the first thing i'm doing is this one the actual minus expected so the serving minus the training distribution so i am subtracting five minus six and i'm getting minus one six minus seven and minus one. So like that i am subtracting the values and i am uh, kind of creating my um, creating my uh, sum of actual minus expected that is the first thing i am doing the the second thing uh, it's it's not sum of actual it's sum of all of it right so first i am doing the just the actual minus expected and then i am doing a log normal of it so the log normal by you are serving by training distribution in our case that is the actual by expected so when i do a log normal of say 5 by 6 or 6 by 7 or 6 i get the respective values now i get both the values i am going to multiply this value with this value which is this formula and then i am going to get an output and finally, I'm going to sum the entire output. So I get a value. Now, how to interpret this value, right? So basically, if you see typically a PSI, this is how we do it. If it's like, if the final sum, final PSI value, that is in our case is 0 0.0125. If it is less than 0.1, then that's an insignificant change. So that is a very, 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 very minor change. You can ignore it. Now, 0.1 to 0.25, that is a minor change. That means that there has been a minor distribution change. And it can very well happen because your business scenario, in, in this case, uh, might see some uh, drastic change. Maybe uh, if you are doing a fraud detection problem, the fraud stuffs have increased. So in this case, there will be a minor change. I think you have to take a call where you want to set the threshold. You want to set the threshold in point 0.1 or in some business process, you know there has been a change happened due to a merger, which is pretty normal. And you want to maybe set a higher threshold and when it's greater than 0.25 that's a major change so in in our case maybe i want to say anything greater than 0.25 or anything greater than 0.2 then alert that is a model drift otherwise just uh, i expect that model to be fine right so so the output of this is nothing but your bucket you are you are using these buckets you are when do you want to alert do you want to alert when there's a minor change then you are telling greater than 0 0.1 alert me if it has a major change greater than 0 0.25 and your threshold depends on your business scenario uh, that you are uh, addressing so the the thing is like you are using this you are checking your serving distribution you are checking your training distribution you are comparing both of this and finally you get a matrix and now you want to uh, go and uh, productionize it now what happens like okay there can be scenario where you get an alert so how to correct the drift now do you want to really correct the drift no you cannot correct the drift the only option is retrain retrain and retrain there is no other option you just have to retrain the model again now when you are retraining it you may you are your label should be present so not all business process will have the labels immediately 
So if you're talking about a churn prediction problem, you you might your model might predict churn 60 days earlier. So you have to wait for the 60 days period to capture the new labels. Or if you have a fraud detection problem that uh, yeah, and it's a banking fraud detection, the banking might have a scenario where they put the default label as not fraud after some X percentage or X number of days. So based on that, you either have to wait for the data to be collected or go back in history and take new data set if you have it and then recalibrate the model and deploy and that's why it's always necessary to for you to have a champion uh, for you to have a challenger system that can be fall back into and that can even be a rules-based system in case of a critical business process or it can be another predictive model as well and you have to then monitor that predictive model as well to see whether it has drifted or not so that's about uh, it in uh, the model and uh, basically the model monitoring uh, the model and data drift uh, concepts and everything uh, thank you